Hey everyone, in this video today, I'm gonna to be explaining how cerebellum malfunction can cause vertigo, dizziness, and balance problems. What causes that malfunction and what you should do about it. Okay, first let's start with what is the cerebellum? The cerebellum is a structure in the back of your brain. I'll show you a graphic right here. And if you look and you Google and you read like little textbooks, basically what you'll find out is the cerebellum has long been known to be responsible for balance function, right? But it's much more than that. And that's a definition you want to keep in mind as I explain how the cerebellum really affects vertigo, dizziness, and balance problems. Uh, the cerebellum uh, is basically responsible for making everything you do smooth, accurate, and coordinated. So for example, if I reach out here and then touch my nose, you notice how that was nice and smooth? That's the cerebellum. Now, when the cerebellum doesn't work correctly, you get this. You get kind of what we call an ataxic response or a dystaxic response. Uh, but that's not just for motion. Uh, the cerebellum is a giant processor. Essentially, every brain area sends uh, projections and circuits through the cerebellum so that it can make them smooth, accurate, and coordinated. Whether we're talking about movement, we're talking about thought, uh, hormonal responses, autonomic responses. So the cerebellum isn't just about balance. However, when the cerebellum gets damaged, one of the very obvious things that you'll see is a balance problem. Now, to really kind of other also explain it, the cerebellum is like a big error checker, right? So what it does is it compares what the brain intends to do with what the brain actually did. So if I say, hey, I want to touch my nose, right? And that's the idea. So that plan gets sent to the cerebellum before, before the movement even happens. And then I miss my nose. Okay, well, the cerebellum says you didn't hit your goal. So I try again and I hit my nose. You can thank your cerebellum. It's an error checker. And how that plays into uh, vertigo, dizziness, and balance problems is like this. And for me to explain this, I want to use a graphic here I'll bring up, and I call it uh, the stability pyramid. So I'm going to bring that up for you right now. So this is the balance stability pyramid. And this is a model I've been using for a long time to explain these concepts to my patients. So here we have our three-dimensional pyramid, and at the base of the pyramid, there are three corners. On that kind of back corner, we have the information coming from your vestibular system, your inner ear. And so we've got things in there like your semicircular canals and your otoliths. And basically what they're going to do is tell your brain uh, when your head is moving, like an angular rotation, uh, and if you're moving in translation, like straight forward and straight back, uh, side to side, up and down. And it's how we also respond to gravity. It's how our, our brain knows where our head is uh, in relation to gravity. But we also have contributing to the balance stability pyramid, we have information coming from your vision. Now we humans are extremely uh, vision dominant just naturally because we've kind of developed that way. And if you think about it, uh, sometimes when people get older and they get in lower light situations, their balance starts to really decline. And it's because they are overly vision dominant. All right? But it's a, vision is a very strong contributor to our balance stability pyramid. Over here on this corner, something you might not think of, is the information coming from the joints and muscles in your neck. Now, primarily your upper neck, but the entire neck. And it's really important because it is another way that your brain learns where your head is. It's another way to get feedback into the system to let it know what's happening. Uh, and the neck muscles can contribute to something called a cervicocolic reflex, a cervicoocular reflex. And so they are a known important part of this balanced stability pyramid. Now, at the top of this pyramid is the thing we're talking about today, and that's the cerebellum. Now, remember I said a minute ago that the cerebellum makes uh, everything smooth, accurate, and coordinated. And that means all of this stuff down here, too. Basically, what it does is it is a calibrator. Now, let me explain that. So, if we think about this as being normal, right? Let's say that all these uh, guys here are contributing equally to the balance stability pyramid, right? We've got, you know, 33 and a third, 33 and a third, and 33 and a third. Well, what happens if vision, uh, actually do a better one. What happens if we get something going wrong with the joints and muscles on our neck? And so instead of it contributing at 100% of what it could, it drops to 50% of what it could. Well, in order for you to function, one of these other corners of the pyramid is gonna have to compensate. And that compensation is largely made possible by your cerebellum recalibrating and re-weighting uh, the balance stability pyramid so that you can function. It doesn't matter if your vision starts to decline or if you get a problem in your inner ear, one of these other corners is gonna have to compensate in order for you to stay functional. And it's the cerebellum 
that allows that to happen. Now, when the cerebellum malfunctions, one of the obvious things you start to see is you start to see balance problems, like I, I noted earlier, uh, dystaxia and ataxia, and sometimes you know eye movements will start to become uh, choppy and not coordinated and not accurate. But our bigger question is to ask is, what would cause the cerebellum to malfunction? And there's two main things for us to consider. Circuit problems and metabolic problems. So let's talk about metabolic problems. Metabolic problems are things like blood sugar, insulin resistance, uh, inflammation, autoimmunity. There's a whole bunch of things that can make the cerebellum malfunction. I don't have time to go through all of them today, but the big ones I see in my practice are neuroinflammatory problems, meaning inflammation in the central nervous system. That can be caused by a lot of things. It can be caused by uh, head trauma, concussion is a very common thing, it can be caused by uh, food sensitivities. Uh, there is a definite thing called uh, uh, gluten ataxia, and so wheat sensitivity, gluten sensitivity, uh, there's a process by which you make antibodies that can then start to attack your cerebellum and make it start to malfunction. But essentially there's metabolic problems, and there's a lot of them. The big ones being that I see inflammatory problems, uh, sometimes, uh, well I'll just stick with that, inflammatory problems, autoimmune problems. Now the other group of factors that can cause a cerebellum malfunction are just what we call uh, circuit problems, which can be direct uh, physical insult. It's not metabolic, but something like a whiplash or a head injury or a concussion. Uh, and in circuit problems, what usually happens is, is that you're going to have to take the cerebellum to the gym. <laughs> but but you got to know exactly what you're doing. So uh, you're not going to find me giving you any information here about how to do cerebellar exercises because you can really screw yourself up pretty royally <laughs> if you uh, do the wrong ones, do them to the wrong side. Uh, so the point is, when the cerebellum starts to malfunction, it can start to affect your vestibular system and your vision and your uh, muscles and joints. And it can affect the calibration of those. So you can start to get symptoms like this. You can start to get uh, blurry vision when you turn your head to the left or right. You can start to get momentary dizziness when you turn your head to the left or the right, kind of a disequilibrium. Uh, you can start to get uh, problems when you're trying to track an object. We call that a pursuit. You can have problems when you try to look quickly with your eyes one way. We call those saccades. So the cerebellum can influence all of that stuff. And it can also influence slow recovery from damage to your vision or damage to your neck or damage to your vestibular system. And so metabolic factors, we always look at those first. And then circuit factors, meaning they're not metabolic. It's basically a problem with activation of certain parts of the cerebellum. And I don't have time to give you a long lecture on that. This video has been long enough. My takeaway to you is this. If you're having vertigo, dizziness, and balance problems, right, make sure you're working with someone that is trained and knows how to recognize cerebellum malfunction. And you can do that by getting an appropriate uh, neurological exam. There's all sorts of tests we can do. I mentioned some a second ago, right? looking at saccades, looking at pursuits, looking at coordination, uh, looking at eye movements uh, using VOG and VNG. Uh, a well-trained doctor should be able to put those together and put the puzzle pieces and find out, you know what, you do have a cerebellum problem. And here's how we would rehabilitate that. Uh, but that's complicated. Not everybody knows how to do that. So make sure you find someone that really is experienced and knows how to do that. And also, I would recommend finding someone that understands about all those metabolic issues. I would, in fact, look at those first. I would look for inflammatory problems, autoimmunity, those sorts of things. That's what I would be looking for. So that's the cerebellum in a nutshell. It's probably unfair to do it that fast. Uh, but I did it anyway. All right. So I'll see you next time.